signing off. So I'm Greg Smith. I work for uh, Second Quadrant, which is a, a global uh, hospital consulting company. Uh, I run the division of the company that's in the United States. Um, one of the one of the things that first got me involved in in working with PostgreSQL full time was doing performance tuning for things that just did not execute as fast as they needed to for the workload. Uh, and so now I'm in into a full time job, which is pretty cool. Um, one of the things that I have noticed about Postgres is that there's enough differences between how Postgres fits together and, and what you need to do to use it successfully than a lot of commercial databases that it seems like there's some pretty common problems that, I, I won't say everyone, but a lot of places do the same things. So if you look at you know, 10 Postgres sites, you'll discover half of them probably run into you know, a couple of problems that I'll talk about here. Some of it is just reorienting yourself to how open source tends to work as opposed to how commercial software tends to work. Uh, some of it is just there are things in Postgres that are not as slick as we'd like them to be, and if you get big enough, eventually you'll run into these problems. And, and some of it is just uh, corporations and corporate IS and, and that whole sort of thing. Um, the people who tend to work with databases uh, are, are pretty regimented and process oriented uh, compared to it compared with some other groups in the software industry. And some of those processes, if they've been developed against other databases, there's a little bit of a disconnect as far as how you translate them over in Postgres that cause some friction. So um, part of the idea here is to talk about what those problems are and to try to get you to where you're at least thinking about them even if you're not running into them yet. Because especially a bigger company can end up taking months to get some of those things sorted out uh, just because of the, the paperwork involved. So, speaking of paperwork, uh, there actually is an enormous amount of information available for you for not all that expensive uh, about Postgres. Uh, there's a manual, there's a big FAQ, it's not just like a throwaway FAQ. There's some really good stuff in there. Uh, there's a couple of books on the market. I have two of them. I wrote one of them. Um, there's a wiki, uh, an official PostgreSQL wiki, which I'll include a couple of links to. There's all kinds of good articles on the wiki. Part of the problem is you might say, well, why don't people read the manual? The manual is, last time I checked, over 2,400 pages long. So the problem is not so much is it in the manual or not. In a lot of cases, the stuff that I'll talk about is in the manual. The problem is, how do I find it? I mean, it's really hard to find enough time to go, hey, let me let me sit down for a little bit and let's read the Postgres manual. You know, it's, it's hard to find that month of time you can go through it. And a lot of the information is pretty dense, too. So no one actually gets to read the whole thing. When you read the sections of it that are interesting to you, but there's a little bit of a, a dependency issue here, which is how do you know which sections are the interesting ones if you haven't already read it first? So part of what I want to do here is talk about these are the things you should go looking for in the manual. In some cases, the descriptions in the manual are very good. You just have to know this is the magic word you want to search for because that's what that's what this is called in Postgres, and this is this is what you want to do. Uh, version policy is one of the things that is in that disconnected get with corporate on this uh, Postgres numbers its versions with what's called a, a major and a minor version number. So if you're going to go from 8.3 to 8.4, you're going to go from 9.0 to 9.1 or something like that, this is actually a major version upgrade. When you do a major version upgrade, that requires all the things that you would expect from a major version upgrade. Applications break. Um, you can. You're going to have to go through a possibly not easy QA cycle to find the problems. There can be major problems you run into. 
So, you know, going from 8.3 to 8.4, expect problems. The really problematic one is, is 8.2 and earlier to 8.3, which I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. Um, if you just get what Postgres calls a minor version of you go from 8.4.3 to 8.4.4 or something like that, Postgres has some very specific guidelines for these things. The first is if unless you absolutely have to change something because it's necessary to fix a bug, don't touch it is, is one of the first rules. So there, there's never intentionally any feature changes here unless they happen to be that the thing was broken and we had to fix a bug and we were going to get to work there. So some other databases, people have run into problems where they upgrade to a newer version of the database and someone decided to add some optimization to speed up something and it broke queries and now the application doesn't run anymore. And so after such incidents, IS departments tend to do policies like no version upgrades to the version to the production database ever, because we got burned by that once. Um, the, the idea here is that the, the kind of problems that get these get into these minor version of um, they tend to be pretty serious. Uh, there can be significant problems that involve database corruption fixed in these updates. Uh, there was just one recently revolving around the, the PG upgrade tool. It's actually a very serious fix. You, you'd really not be smart to avoid getting the newer version of the that has that fix for it if you ever intend to use that thing. Um, also, some of the bugs that you can run into are, are really bad. The, the last really bad one that I had a lot of customers impacted by is uh, there was a long-standing bug in relation to how auto vacuum worked, where it could end up getting to the state where it was no longer than what it was supposed to. These are the kind of problems that get fixed in minor version updates. They're not, well, let's go play around with this code because we feel like mess around with it in the state of version. The stable version is taken very seriously in the Postgres community. The, the sort of line for, for these changes, um, and they're, they're called backports because these changes will start in a newer version of Postgres typically. Like right now, if someone makes a change, it's going to start in 9.1 normally, because 9.1 is the version of the active development, and then it gets backported to 9.0, 8.4, 8.3, however far back it makes sense for that thing to go. The idea behind a backport is if it's not really clear whether this makes sense to change or not, the, the spirit, at least, of that guideline is, is it more risky to have this change or to not have this change? So for example, if this is a data corruption problem, there's always a possibility, well, I'm going to go touch code. Touching code always has the potential of breaking something, but if you know for sure you are absolutely going to get data corruption in this particular code path under these conditions, and you fix it, you've added a little bit of uncertainty. Hey, wait a minute, there's some risk. I've introduced new code into the database. It could have bugs in it. Well, but the code it was replacing definitely had bugs in it. So the concept should be not applying these small version updates, these minor version updates, is considered the risky thing to do. The risky thing is, is is not getting the updates and never doing the updates. You know, the risky thing is not, hey, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna break my application if I do this. What you may have to do, especially if you're in a very strong uh, IS process kind of environment, is you might not want to call these version updates because people get scared sometimes of that term. So what other database vendors call, tend to call these, you may want to adopt that terminology and start calling it, well, this is a Postgres fix pack for bugs, or you know, it's a service pack or a hot fix or something like that. And if you look at if you look at the release notes for a new Postgres version, you can almost certainly find something in there that sounds scary and that you might run into and say, hey, I need to go apply the Postgres hot fix for this uh, problem where if we ever decide to use PG upgrade, you know, these things will end up happening. That sounds like the sort of thing that people go, okay, well that, okay, yeah, yeah, we need to do that, that makes sense. Where if you tell them we need to do a version upgrade to fix this to fix this problem, people 
like, wow, I, I no, that doesn't, I don't want to do a version of that. So you may have to tweak the terminology a little bit. And, and to refer to these as something like a service pack is, is completely appropriate. That's more what they're aimed to do rather than big updates. So what, what we recommend is that if you're running Postgres, you stay on the most current minor version of whatever you've got. So if you've got 8.4, you want to be running 8.4 dot whatever the latest 8.4 is at any given time. Um, you can just avoid a lot of problems that way. And, and also, if you post problems to the mailing list that are known to be issues with the version that you've got, uh, people will be slightly less sympathetic to your calls <laughs> if you haven't done uh, at least the, the minor version of your own. People, uh, people understand, people in the community understand, you may not be able to do a, a major version of uh, but there's no there's no downtime other than you have to restart the database, which takes a few seconds and follows the a minor version update. Nothing really changes. You just load the new binary in, stop the old binary, start the new one. About the only thing that's that's troublesome about it is if you want to roll back to the earlier version because you are the rare 